You're listening to Big World Network. Magpie Raven Episode 1 Written by Anna Knoss Read by Willow Wood Coming to the graveyard at night had been one of his worst ideas since he had agreed to eat five cockroaches in less than half an hour. Raphael shuddered as he squeezed himself past the broken gate, being greeted by a gush of ice-cold wind. It should be almost midnight, the time he had agreed to come here and sit in between the many tombstones. Gods, why did he always have to end up with such jerks as friends? Raphael couldn't understand it, but that wasn't his main concern. Shuddering, he pulled the jacket tighter around himself, glancing around. The graveyard was deserted. An owl hooted in the nearby wood. Perfect cliché graveyard night, he thought to himself sarcastically. He shouldn't have accepted the bet. Then again, it had been the only possible way to finally shut them all up. Ever since Raphael had lost his twin brother, he had been exposed to the taunts and threats of the whole school. Any bully coming up to him surely had a new, completely insane bet for him to accept. He never could back down from them. The only other option was to get beaten up and sent home with a black eye. The last time that had happened, his mother had almost fainted at the sight. Ashamed, he pulled the hood of his pullover tighter around his face. It was strangely cold for a summer night, much too cold indeed. It was as if the graves were sucking all the warmth from their surroundings and leaving nothing but this moist, cold like being touched by a corpse. Raphael cursed his overly active imagination for doing that to him, though he doubted he could have stopped himself from imagining any of it. The sounds of a bell pulled him back to reality. It was midnight, and from this point on, he had to spend a whole hour at the graveyard, alone, with nothing but the dead to keep him company. Raphael curled up a little tighter, glancing around again. Where was the grave of his brother? He had been skipping visits for such a long time, it was making him feel horribly guilty. Raphael got up to his feet, brushing off some of the moist earth clinging to his tattered jeans. Exhaling deeply, he slowly wandered along the many tombstones until he found what he had been looking for. In the light of the full moon breaking through the clouds, the golden letters shimmered on the black stone. Hey there, Karash. Long time no see, Raphael muttered as he crouched down in front of his twin brother's grave. It was only one of those tiny graves, big enough to contain an urn, but nothing more. I'm sorry I haven't come to visit you in such a long time. I hope you aren't mad at me. His breath came in clouds, indicating just how cold it had grown. The moonlight felt even cooler on his skin, and for a moment, Raphael asked himself if he was starting to lose his mind. There was no such thing as the dead sucking the cold from their surroundings, nor was there any supernatural cause for an almost wintry night. He had to be imagining things. Combined with his guilt, it was a pretty good explanation for his impression of freezing out here. A strange feeling of ease rose inside Raphael, and he smiled weakly. Of course you aren't mad at me. Sorry for even thinking like that, brother. It's just... I've been away for such a long time, and I wasn't sure if it would change anything to come by now. He reached out to touch the tombstone, finding it surprisingly warm. And, as he touched it, the cold around him subsided leaving nothing but a mild night. There, he had known it. He had just been imagining the cold. It has gotten pretty lonely without you. 
Mom and Dad are still sad. And me, too. Even Camille was crying when we remembered how you left us. It's hard without you, Karash. I really miss you, brother. God, Snell, that is brotherly love. You are aware that he won't hear you like this, aren't you? Raphael almost fell against the tombstone as he heard this slightly annoyed voice. Blinking incredulously, he turned around to catch sight of a stranger sitting on one of the small pillars where, just seconds before, a weeping angel statue had been standing. Raphael's heart pounded painfully hard against his ribcage as his mind began to process who this stranger could be. Wait, you're actually seeing me? Now it was the other's turn to be perfectly confused, and as Raphael nodded, the stranger began cursing under his breath. Damn it! I knew I shouldn't have come here. You can't fool a true Zephyr, after all! Raphael remained crouched in front of his brother's grave, his head and upper body turned to the side to keep an eye on the stranger. In the dark he could barely see anything, and if anyone asked him what the stranger looked like, he couldn't have said anything with certainty. But that aside, what are you doing out here at midnight? I mean, there's no reason for a surfer to come here. You get all your ingredients from contacts, right? Raphael shrugged lightly, deciding to wait before giving any explanation. Would he sound completely crazy if he confessed that it was part of a bet? Oh wait, you're not the one those other kids are waiting for in that bar. Damn, if you let them treat you like that, you have got to be pretty messed up. No, I mean it. You should be kicking their asses all around the city and stop allowing them to treat you like a punching bag. Okay, now Raphael wished that the other would just stop talking for a moment. Was it so painfully obvious that he was nothing more than an amusing pastime for the other boys at his school? The stranger hopped off the small pillar, snickering to himself and shaking his head. But aside from that, it's nice to meet someone who can see me without having to use any complicated spells or stuff like that. My name's Ekariel. Nice to meet you, Raphael. Ekeriel extended a hand, and Raphael caught a glimpse of something behind him. It looked like hot air on a summer day, when the streets heat up like mad from the sunlight. That could only mean... So, you're an angel? Raphael quite bluntly stated, making Ekeriel grin and nod. Exactly. I'm an angel, though not one of those doves. Well, better said, I stopped being one of them some time ago. I got into trouble with the wrong guys and ended up being kicked out of heaven. Raphael involuntarily began to chuckle, but caught himself soon enough. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. It must have been hard on you to be banned. Ekariel snorted and shook his head. <laughs> to be honest, I was damned glad that I finally got away from heaven. If you think that angels aren't judgmental, then I have to disappoint you. If you make the smallest mistake, they start bickering about it. Even worse, they start to watch you more closely. And eventually, you end up as the punching bag of a whole legion of doves. The angel took a look around, shuddering slightly. I'm not meaning to be picking on you or anything, he said. I know how it is to be in your situation. I've been in this mess before. You can't get out of it, right? Raphael nodded, though only hesitantly. Wrong. You can get out of it. You just tell yourself you can't because they have beaten you up often enough to make you believe that. Even if Ekeriel sounded strangely sarcastic, Raphael couldn't help but believe this unusual angel. He slowly got up, casting a look down on the grave of his brother. Maybe Ekeriel had met Kerosh in hell. He at least assumed that Ekaril was one of the fallen ones, so it was possible. Say, Ekaril? Have you met anyone named Karash Zephar? Ekaril snickered, nodding. Yes, I'll meet your brother down there. Let me tell you, 
He is more stubborn than anyone I've ever met before. If he thinks he has to do something, nothing will stop him. But that's what you need down there to survive. An odd sense of relief flooded into Raphael, and he nodded slowly. That was how he knew his brother. A soft smile came to his face, and he leaned his head back, with his eyes closed and a relaxed expression on his face. It was good to know that even in his afterlife, Karosh would never stop fighting for what he thought was right. Say, Raphael, do you really want to spend the night out here? You really don't have to. Those jackasses can go look for someone else to bully. You don't deserve to be their punching bag. I'll tell you only that, Raphael. Don't let them treat you like that, or it will come to a point where it will be too late for any regrets. Ekaria looked strangely worried as he grabbed Raphael's shoulders. Your parents already lost one son, right? Don't make their pain any worse by losing you too. I'm not kidding, Raphael. Those other boys could kill you at this rate. I'm just lucky that I'm a damned angel. But you? You're immortal. Don't forget that. And now, go home before your parents have to worry even more. As Raphael dashed away and was heading home, Ekaril leaned back against Kirosh's tombstone and lit a cigarette. You can come out now, Karosh. He's on the right path, at least for now. From the shadows of the wood, a second figure emerged, the moonlight revealing a tall, pale man with black hair and mostly black garments. Good to know, Kirosh remarked, sighing deeply. I wish I could have talked to him for a while, but not yet. He's still in danger. Did you hear anything from Manuel? Ekaril shook his head, offering Kirosh a cigarette, which the other declined. Our worries might be over already. You can't sense anything now, can you? Kirosh shook his head, chewing on his lower lip. It's still there. Something is out there, waiting for my brother. And it wants to kill him. Visit BigWorldNetwork.com for more E-Series samples or sign up for a $3 a month subscription for full access to all written and audio E-Series content, accessible from the website, mobile, or e-reader devices. Thanks for listening. Big World Network.